Thanks very much for joining me. Today I want to say a few words about something that we are not hearing enough about, and that is the scale of the humanitarian disaster that is currently unfolding in Gaza. And it is a horrible, horrible disaster. The war in Gaza began, as you know, with Hamas's horrific attack against innocent Israelis, which ended up killing over 1,200 innocent people and taking more than 200 hostages, 130 of whom are still in captivity right now under terrible conditions. But we should also understand that since October 7th, the beginning of the war, more than 25,000 Palestinians have been killed and 62,000 wounded, 70% of whom are women and children. Let me repeat that. 70% of whom are women and children. This is an astronomical number of civilian casualties. Unbelievably, almost 2 million people, that is 85% of the population in Gaza, have been thrown out of their homes, just simply evicted from their homes, forced to go elsewhere. 70% of the housing units in Gaza have been either damaged or destroyed. Think about that. 70% of the housing units damaged or destroyed. And on top of all of that, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his right-wing extremist government have made it almost impossible for food, water, fuel, and medical supplies to enter Gaza. In fact, only 25% of what the people of Gaza need to survive is currently making it through border checkpoints. Water is scarce, and what little water is available is often contaminated. Desperately needed medical aid is being held back at the border, while many hospitals and medical facilities are now unable, because of bombing, to provide the medical services people need. And here is something else that I hope no one will ignore. And that is that the United Nations reports that more than 90% of the population in Gaza faces, quote, acute food insecurity, end quote. And 570,000 people in Gaza are currently facing, quote, catastrophic hunger. And virtually every household in Gaza today is skipping meals and parents are going without food so that they can put pieces of bread on their children's plates. In other words, Gaza is starving. Hundreds of thousands of children go to sleep hungry every night, and desperate Palestinians are mobbing the few UN relief trucks that can reach beyond the border crossing. This is an unprecedented humanitarian crisis. I recently spoke with the United Nations World Food Program's chief economist, Arif Hussein, someone who has worked in acute conflict zones for the better part of two decades. And what he has told me and made public is that he has never in his career seen starvation at this level. Let that sink in for a moment. What we know is that this crisis is only going to get worse if we don't act. And if Israel does not change its inhumane military policies. Gaza is at risk of widespread famine in the coming weeks and months. And in the midst of all of this, let me tell you something that troubles me even more. And that is what is happening to the children of Gaza, who are a very large part of the population there. Think about it for a moment. Imagine that you are a five-year-old in Gaza. You are thrown out of your home. You don't know where you're going with your parents. You don't have any money to start with. You're living in poverty. You are now living in uncomfortable, crowded shelters surrounded by people you don't know. There's not a bathroom that you can use. There's not a shower that you can use to get clean or a bathtub. And you're wondering every day, having seen all the destruction around you, is a bomb going to come and kill you and your parents? That's what the children of Gaza are living with right now. And on top of all of that, what UNICEF projects is that in the next few weeks, child wasting, and I got to tell you, this is a term I hate and I hesitate to even use child wasting, the most life threatening form of malnutrition in children. 
could affect up to 10,000 kids in Gaza. Trauma like this does not disappear overnight. The horrors of this war will stay with the people of Gaza for many, many decades. So the issue for us here in America is what do we do? Well, for a start, we must be as loud and clear as we can be that the Netanyahu government will not continue to get the support of the United States of America, not one nickel more for this horrific and inhumane war. Do Israelis have the right to defend themselves against a terrorist group like Hamas? Yes, they do. But they do not have the right to go to war against the entire Palestinian people and kill large numbers of innocent women and children. Now, last week, I and a few of my Senate colleagues forced the very first votes since this war began on holding Israel and Netanyahu accountable. And we did it through a provision in the Foreign Assistance Act called Section 502B. And what that provision did was demand a report from the State Department informing us as to exactly what Israel is doing with the large number of weapons that we provide them and whether their military actions are in violation of human rights, international law, and in fact, American law. Now on that vote, we only received 11 support, 11 supporters, we got 11 votes on that resolution. But I can tell you absolutely without equivocation that the tide is turning in our direction. More and more Americans, and in fact, more and more members of the Senate and the House, understand that we have got to stand up to the right-wing extremist war policies of Netanyahu and his government. And what we did last week, let me be very clear about it, is a start, not an end. We're just beginning to do what has to be done. We are going to continue to work on this issue until we win. And winning means that we make it clear to Netanyahu that this terrible war has got to end, that there needs to be a two-state solution in the area. But in order for all of that to take place, in order for us to be successful, in order for us to create a peaceful Middle East, we are going to need your help. Please, everything you can to contact your members of the House and the Senate, let them know that you will not accept the status quo. You will not accept the horrible things that are now taking place in Gaza. U.S. policy on this issue has got to change. We cannot be complicit in the terrible, terrible situation in Gaza where so many innocent people are dying or starving. So there's a lot in front of us. Let's do it. And thank you very much for your efforts.